You know, one job that retouchers get asked to do all the time is make someone smile more, whether it's a family portrait shot or it's a product shot where someone's just not happy enough that they receive their latest thong. So what we're gonna do is use Puppet Warp and show you how we can make people smile more and even open their eyes. Photoshop CS5 Puppet Warp. Let's go have a look. All right, in this image, we have a very unhappy guy. We need to make him smile a bit more. And we're gonna use Puppet Warp, but if you apply Puppet Warp to the face as it is, it's gonna move the whole head around. So a quick uh, operation is to grab the lasso tool, and we're feathering this 11 pixels, and really has to do with the resolution of the image, but 11 is very good. I'm gonna make a selection around his mouth, down to the bottom here, and then I'm going to make a new layer via copy. And if we look over here on the right, I'll turn this layer off. You can see it's just the floating mouth. You have to do this with a soft edge because we're going to bend and distort what this face looks like. If you do it with a hard edge without any of that feathering, then you're going to get um, telltale signs, really amateur work where you'll see something lining up. We don't want to have that happen. All right. So we now have the, the mouth floating on its own layer in the edit menu, Puppet Warp. And by default, the mesh turns on, and you can see it draws this mesh. I actually want more points inside here because I want to be able to put more points and distort this a little easier. When I start to click, it's going to add these mesh uh, points, and I'm just going to turn that mesh off just for us right now. The first points I'm going to add on the top lip and on the bottom, I'm not going to move these. Think of these as being an anchor, that they're going to stay right there. Same thing over here, put these in, and these are the two that I'm going to move. If I hold the shift key, I can select multiple pins at the same time. And I have the precision of working with the arrow keys on my keyboard. Look at this, move that up. And you see a bit of an artifacting going on there, and that really is just the, the uh, temporary display as it's trying to show that to you. If you hold the shift key down, then we can make him smile quite a bit, or make him frown. The other thing I want to do at this point is I want to make sure that he's opening his mouth too because when we smile the corners actually move up and away. All right, we have to commit to this. It's the one thing they have to understand about the puppet tool is you create a distortion and then we have to either hit the enter key or up at the top of the screen there's a little check mark up there. Boom. And remember, we did this to a floating layer, so I can turn this layer on and I can turn this layer off. I have to stop and tell you how amazing this is because 10 years ago, I had to do this without the Puppet Warp tool. And I would give myself a whole morning of cloning and painting and copying and rotating. There was no stretching or liquify tools at all. We used to walk up, you know, oh, you get the idea. Anyway, what about the eyes? That's another one. People need to get their eyes open. There's a limit to what we can do here. We can't completely open closed eyes, but we can definitely give the impression that they're opening a bit more. Just gonna do the exact same thing. Over here, we're 11 pixels. I'm back on the main layer, and I'm going to select his eyebrows also, because when we smile, we move our eyebrows up too, okay? So there's a large selection, layer, new, via copy. And again, I'll turn off the lower layer and see, there we have it. So now we have the eyes on layer two, edit, puppet warp, and again, I'll make sure that I've got more points in there because I'm really gonna add a lot of distortion to this. Okay, let's zoom in. And I'm going to anchor the corner points to the eyes, and there's, there's really no hard and fast rule of how uh, you place these. You might want to, to place more than just one up in the top. If you, if you don't place enough of these, then you'll tend to uh, bend the eye and it will look very fake. I'll lock these down here at the bottom and then we can put a couple up here. Looks like he's got uh, quite an elaborate piercing going on. Now that the next step is a little bit uh, laborious, we'll just 
shift select each one of these. That way we can move them all at the same time. So selecting, selecting, hold the shift key down, add to them, remembering not to, to select the ones we don't want to move. Arrow key up, there we go. Maybe that's a bit much. Click the check mark, there we go, there we go. The last thing, just to make this a little bit easier to handle, we now have two layers, layer one and layer two. I'll select both of these and I'm just gonna group these. So Command G, Control G, groups it in and now they're on their own layer. So there's a before, there's our after. Um, I guarantee you that he wouldn't even know we've edited his face uh, to make it look better. So remember to keep this natural, keep it live, uh, and don't go too far, and your puppet tool is gonna make everybody happy with their new thong.